Well, between that misinformation and those cyber attacks, we're seeing much of this attack carry out online. I'm now joined by Claudio Popa, certified security and privacy expert, as well as author of the Canadian Cyber Fraud Handbook. Good to have you. Thanks for having me on the show. What is the concern there with regards to uh, the, the cyber threat, the cyber war that we could see coming out of this that perhaps we've already been seeing over the last few months, we can even say years? Yeah, um, we certainly can. <clears throat> It's starting to look like there was a lot of preparation coming up to this conflict. Uh, just the speed with which some Ukrainian infrastructure fell um, um, alludes to the fact that um, uh, certain organizations have been taken over uh, perhaps for months, uh, maybe even years uh, ahead of time. Uh, we're seeing systems that were backdoored so that there's a uh, there's a uh, the ability to to control them. There's a build the ability to paralyze systems, mm -hmm. applications, perhaps have an economic impact that uh, that was not perhaps predictable uh, right up until the start of the conflict a few days ago. And that's the kind of thing that has been concerning countries around the world over the, the past uh, few days. What about impacting communications? I mean, in this case, of course, military communications. That is so important and key impacting them being able to infiltrate them to, to see you know i guess what what's happening on ukraine side how but how about that element of it and how dangerous that can be that's a that's a front where um that's a front that's being contested in real time and we're seeing it today we're seeing each side play their best cards to try to break um uh, confidentiality barriers to try to gain uh, an advantage over the other to try to anticipate each other's moves. And it's very difficult for people like us, for example, without visibility into that, uh, in direct visibility into that conflict to comment on. But mm -hmm. we know that it's going on um, in a big way because we are seeing some of the collateral damage. We're seeing systems taken down, bank websites, uh, government sites, are um, uh, sputtering. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, we're, you know, some of them have disappeared altogether. Uh, there are very various error messages that allude to the fact that they're under uh, some serious attack and probes of all kinds. So it's a bit of a mess uh, yeah. at the moment. I can't, I can't lie to you. But uh, the concern here is that it might come to other countries, uh, oh. countries that are. Uh, applying sanctions against Russia, um, like the SWIFT, mm -hmm. um, like the cutoff uh, to SWIFT transfers. For the banking system there, yeah. And we know that Canada has talked about providing Ukraine with that cybersecurity support. But couple all of that as well, if I could uh, really quickly as my last question to you, the disinformation and the impact that can have. Mm -hmm. That's a huge a front again. Uh, social platforms are, are monitoring disinformation and, and trends, and it's a very difficult decision to make to to silence different parties because there's positive and negative news dissemination. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you still have to deal with the the freedom of speech and all of that. But how do you decide how to silence, when to silence, mm -hmm. and how to track? Because so many of these. Let's face it, there's so many bots on Twitter, for instance, that are mirroring and amplifying these messages uh, to control so much volume of discourse is um, is a daunting task. So I certainly don't envy these social media platforms, um, uh, at least over the past few days, but certainly over the next few days, it's going to be a monumental challenge that I I hope they rise to the occasion. Indeed, it is a very complex situation indeed. Claudio, good to get your analysis on this. Claudio Popa is a certified security and privacy expert as well as author of the Canadian Cyber Fraud Handbook. Thanks again, Claudio. Thank you. You're very welcome.